Yeah, those are not small. It's funny sometimes some of the stuff I take, people are like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Is it? yeah. I had something the other day. It was in this huge wooden crate. For a, like a cooker, broiler, so I don't know where it was. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I was just one dude who met me. So she was like, wait a second. Seven pounds. Ninety-three point seven pounds. Ugh. Okay. So these are the Focal Trio Eleven BEs. Focal's flagship monitor. They came on a pallet. <laughs> so I'm gonna unpack these and uh, make sure that my stands are actually gonna be up to par to, to use these. So let's get them unpacked and then we'll throw them up as long as my, my current stands are gonna do the job. All right, here we go. I guess this is how this is supposed to go. piece of fabric hanging out. I'm gonna grab that with a piece of pliers, with a pair of pliers. Oh, there we go. My gosh. I welded these stands together myself many, many years ago. They are super stable, but those are heavy monitors. You guys might see some, some bad stuff here. I think we're good. Ah. We should be all right, right? Let's give it a try. For size reference, <laughs> I'm 6'2", 260 pounds. This is, this is how huge these are. <laughs> Look how much bigger those are. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that I will have to get some different stands, but I just gotta get them plugged in and get them broken in, because these take, apparently they need 60 hours of runtime in order to break them in, and I got work to do, so I just need to get them, get them playing music. Okay, so these Focal Trio 11 BEs have been up for two days now. Um, they've been running around the clock for two days. One of the craziest things about these monitors so far is that they sound exactly the same in every position around the room. I did an Insta story the other day and I had some Muse playing. I wish I could do this on camera, but I can't because I get a copyright strike. But I walked around the room while they were playing and then you listen back to the audio that the phone recorded and even the phone, it, it sounds like exactly the same in every spot in the room. That's one of the craziest things. That was the first thing that I noticed about these speakers is the sweet spot must be enormous. This is actually the first video in a series of monitor reviews that I'm gonna be doing, going over a whole bunch of different monitors, trying to find what's gonna be next for me. What is the next monitor that I'm going to commit to and put in my room and continue working on? So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe tab so you get notified when I upload these videos. I would love it if you guys come along with me on this journey. Now, if at any point in time you decide to purchase a pair of these monitors, there's a link in the description below. And if you use those links, to purchase a pair of these or any other piece of gear that you might see down there or any other piece of gear you might see on Sweetwater's website. It helps the channel out quite a bit, so I very much appreciate it if you guys use those links to buy anything that you might need for your studio or musical journey. Now for the fun part, let's talk about these monitors. I've had these monitors up for a few weeks now and I've got to say that they, they are like one of the most impressive 
in quotes sounding monitors uh, that I've ever listened to. Now this first section here might get a little bit hippy dippy for some of you engineer types out there, but like they, they invoke an emotional response that I've only ever experienced a couple times on a, uh, in a couple different rooms. And like even my wife and, and other uh, engineers and clients, I would play them songs. Everyone's response is the same. Like it's, it, clients and other engineers, they, they would turn around when the song's over and they're like, that, that was an emotional experience. Like that's literally what they would say to me and, and I can't sum it up in any better way. Th that, is, that is nuts when a, when a speaker can invoke an emotional response, and obviously the music, where this is just a tool to, to play the music back, but having that experience, experiencing music in a way that, that you've maybe never experienced music before, that these people have never experienced music before, man, that's a, such a powerful, inspiring thing. So let's get on to the more technical bits. Uh, they, they're huge. I mean, you saw the intro. They came on a big truck. They, they come on a pallet, and the guy had to use a, a skid loader to get them into my garage. So these are actually uh, 25 inches tall, uh, 18 inches deep, 13 inches wide, um, and they weigh 82 pounds. So the frequency range of these Focal Trio 11 BEs is 30 hertz to 40 kilohertz, so extremely wide frequency response. They are a total of 500 watts, but that is a little bit deceiving because they are loud, like they are like PA speaker loud. I guess how they achieve this is the drivers in these are really, really, really efficient, so they don't need as much power to achieve a certain volume as some other monitors do. Now what's interesting to me is in the past I've worked on monitors that were capable of getting really loud. If a monitor sounds really good, really loud, they usually don't work all that great that quietly. These seem to work, they seem to be perfectly at home no matter how loud or quiet I'm working, which is important to me because I, I actually mix pretty quietly most of the time. So Joshua from Focal was kind enough to, to come out and help me dial these in and we experimented with all sorts of placements and tuning. We measured the room with some software. So here's what that was like. Yeah, so here we're comparing our your, just your, the left speaker. This mm -hmm. is just kind of like set him up, shot him. But the crazy thing is, if you're looking, this is frequency response and amplitude over time. So you don't have just X, you don't have amplitude and frequency, you've got amplitude, frequency, and how that decays. Mm -hmm. And usually, like, it starts falling off at like 150. Pretty, pretty nuts. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty nuts. <laughs> All right, great. Yep. I'm just going to lay him kind of on top of that. Just, just to be safe here. Oh. half a second of reverberation time at 140 hertz, it's gone. Just because we put horizontal. People don't realize, okay, this is the difference between placement of a speaker in your space. Yeah. yeah. And even though like that seems like a tiny thing, that's a, that's a, that's big, a big result. That's a big deal. Now I knew my room was flat. I measured it when I first got done treating it. I knew it was a flat room, but I had no idea it was really that flat. That's completely crazy to me. So for horizontal placement, all you do is unscrew the, the tweeter mid-range plate and you can rotate it uh, 360 degrees in any orientation that you would like. So that way you can lay these on their sides, tweeter in, tweeter out, whatever works best for you in your room. Now we tried both. And for me personally, um, I actually preferred them vertical. Now I, I wanna make something pretty clear here that at this point, when you're talking about monitors of this caliber, they never suck. Like there's, there's almost no sucky options on the market. Like they, they will never sound bad. So when I'm saying these next things that I'm about to say, we're, I'm being extremely picky and we are like paying attention to the tiniest of details here. So when they were on their sides in the horizontal placement, um, I found them slightly more congested 
listed in the mid-range. Now, when they were horizontal, the low end on paper in our tests that we run was actually more accurate for this position and in my room. However, I liked the feel of the low end a little bit less when they are horizontal. So to me, vertically placed, they, uh, they're they a little bit more clear and open sounding. Um, and the low end I like a little bit better, even though technically it's not as perfect and flat. So the low end on these is, uh, man, it's something special. It's absolutely incredible, especially for a monitor uh, of this size and in this price range, the low, on, the low end on these is just, it's stunning. I don't really know how else to say it. They, they really do go plenty low enough for any kind of music that I would ever work on. I really need a monitor that goes like almost flat to like 30 or 32 hertz. And these do that. Uh, the mid range on these is incredibly detailed, uh, especially the upper mids. The mids and upper mids are incredibly detailed um, and they have a real three dimensional quality to them. You, you don't feel like you're listening to the music, you feel like you're listening into the music, like like you could reach back and grab something in the back of the mix. Like they're very three dimensional, they're very deep sounding. So this makes reverb tails like unbelievably awesome. Like the dialing in effects and reverbs uh, and stuff like that, low level information, stuff that's supposed to be pushed back in the mix or quiet in the mix, uh, the ability to hear that stuff with precision and, and clearly know what's happening. That's pretty incredible on these. And this also means that EQ moves are incredibly obvious and in incredibly easy to dial in, even when we're talking small EQ moves, like maybe in mastering. Uh, the top end from this beryllium tweeter is really good. It's really smooth. I don't want to say it's subdued or neutral. It's definitely open. There's definitely like enough of it, um, but it's definitely a smooth, not harsh sounding speaker whatsoever. And But it goes all the way up to 40K. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy and and when you start using a high shelf on stuff like when I'm using like the mag EQ on a vocal and I'm commonly boosting at 40 kilohertz uh, on a lead vocal with that EQ it, it's really interesting that you do feel even though I know we can't hear that high you do feel like you can hear the difference more accurately in the very top of the top end than I'm used to really hearing on a lot of other monitors sonically overall I think they're incredibly well balanced I think they're very, very detailed and they're very three-dimensional. They're very, they're very deep three-dimensionally speaking. Now here's where it starts to get a little bit crazy for this monitor and this is one of the most impressive features about them actually. So they have this feature called focus mode and what focus mode does is you hook up a foot switch to the back of one of them and then you daisy chain a cable from that monitor to the other monitor. And then when you engage this focus mode, it turns off the 10 inch woofer and it recalibrates the crossover entirely. I guess there's two separate crossovers in there. And so it's running the five inch woofer and the beryllium tweeter as a full range monitor. So when you engage this mode, there seems to be a, uh, a roll off of the, the, the top end. We're no longer listening up to 40K. Um, and all the low end, like when in full range on these, the low end, I mean, it hits real good down to like 40, 35 and 40 Hertz. But what's interesting is when you engage this focus mode, it moves that low end up to what feels like about, about 90 Hertz. I did not expect this to be such an incredibly useful feature. I really thought that this was going to be kind of a gimmick and not be that useful. It's in the same cabinet. It's the, still the same speaker. How much different could it really be? It turns out it's incredibly useful, actually. Dialing in the upper low end of a kick drum in that like 90 hertz range is so incredibly easy with focus mode engaged. Uh, dialing in bass guitars or like the, the upper bass of, of synthesizers and all that kind of stuff. Anything in that like 90 to 120 hertz range is so incredibly easy to dial in when the focus mode is engaged. And since you also have that top end roll off, it really makes you focus in on the mid range when you're in that mode because magic is in the mid range, don't forget. For those of you that haven't seen it, that's a mixed tutorial that I have and you should go check it out. I'll link it down below as well. But it really helps you like dive into the mid range and only focus on that and not be distracted by the incredible low end down at 30 and 40 hertz. This is actually such a useful feature 
and I did not expect this. This is such a useful feature that I've taken my NS10s down. After many, many years of working on NS10s for 30 or 40% of the mix, I've taken them down. And, and now I'm using this focus mode for 30 or 40% of the mix instead of the NS10s. And I like the cleaner look of the studio with less monitors. Uh, it helps me get my placement better because I'm not having to compromise placement on studio monitors between three pairs. Now I'm only looking at two pairs. So that helps for, with placement and everything. This is just so, so much more of a useful feature than I thought it would be. Now on the back panel of these Focals, you have a standby option, more on that in a second. Next to that, you have an XLR input. These are all analog. Uh, you have an input sensitivity switch um, and an all analog EQ with a low shelf, a low mid, and a high shelf. Then you have the focus input and output, so you can hook up the foot switch and daisy chain it to the other monitor. And like I already mentioned, these are ported speakers with one large port at the bottom here and two small ports up next to the mid-range driver and those become the base ports when you switch over to the focus mode. So I feel like I have sang the praises of these monitors enough. They're, they truly are a stunning pair of monitors, but there are a couple cons, some things that I would like to see changed, uh, some things I think I that could be done better. So let's talk cons for a second. The first con, the biggest one, the, the one that's the biggest deal to me is the fact that there's no foot switch included in these monitors. Uh, they are $8,000 for the pair. So these are not cheap monitors. I think at $8,000, thousand dollars a pair they should have included a twenty dollar foot switch and a couple cables to hook up the foot switch because there's no way to activate focus mode without a foot switch so when you buy these you've spent eight thousand dollars on them I feel like you should be able to at least engage focus mode without buying anything extra. The other negative is the standby option. Every time these go into standby or wake back up from standby they make this little sound um, and it's not that big of a deal, but if you are operating like I am, where you're tracking in a room, uh, it's it's interesting, like if I'm sitting here playing acoustic guitar and the monitors are turned all the way down because I'm using headphones, if they go to sleep while I'm playing some soft finger picking acoustic guitar, you will hear the monitors one at a time go <laughs> as they shut off, you'll, you'll hear that. Um, so I'm not using the standby mode uh, on these at all because uh, I don't want that coming through a vocal take or through a soft acoustic guitar take when I'm recording in the room. Something to keep in mind, not a huge negative, but I am not able to use the standby mode because of the noise that they make when they shut off. Those are the only negatives that I had. Like I said, these are $8,000 per pair. It's gonna be real interesting to see if these other monitors that are getting sent to me to, to check out, if they're capable of keeping up with these in that same price range, because uh, from, a, from a technical standpoint, the low end end on these is is really incredible for for a monitor that that is eight thousand um, dollars the focus mode is incredibly useful and such a great feature for something for a monitor in this price range um, the level of detail and, and three-dimensionalness three-dimensionalness <laughs> of them is is so impressive and uh, it's 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 really good and then the emotional side of it all my clients all the engineers that have sat right here and listened to these have had a, a truly emotional experience which that's not something that's easy to come by at any price point, let alone at this $8,000 a pair price point. Again, there's links in the description if you decide to pick a pair of these up yourself, or if you just wanna explore other options, there's links for a whole bunch of stuff in the description, and I very much appreciate if you guys use those links. Make sure you stay tuned for the other videos coming up. I am really pumped to try out some of these other monitors. I'm not gonna tell you what ones are coming next, but I mean, the next pair of monitors, they are no slouch either, so I'm really excited to, to get them up here and try them out and um, stay tuned for the ultimate video when I'll be going over what one I decided and eventually I'll actually the final video will be comparing all of the monitors to each other and why I chose the ones that I did I still right now as of the time of filming this I don't know which one I'm gonna choose so this is gonna be an awesome journey and I hope you guys follow along with me thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one peace